and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat, in which we would look at a CPA simulation. A CPA simulation is no more than a multiple choice presented in a different format. So do not be intimidated by a CPA simulation. For example, this question is about the fair value in the equ versus the equity method. It doesn't mean it's something different than a multiple choice because I can ask you about the fair value in the equity method in a multiple choice setting. All what the examiner does is they will take the information, break it into an exercise. Now this exercise, now how can you prepare for an exercise like this? Well, you, you use your CPA material, obviously, whatever, whether you are taking Becker, Roger, Glime, you would use something similar to college exercises. So the simulation is basically an exercise that you see at the end of the chapter of your intermediate accounting, advanced accounting, or governmental accounting. So this is what it is. So you have to be familiar with this information. Now, how can I help you as Farhat Lectures? On my website, you will find additional information for your CPA exam, as well as your accounting courses for that matter, to help you solve these questions. So I don't replace your Becker, your Roger, your Wiley, and your Glam. You do need those courses. You may need additional explanation, the theory behind the material to help you understand the material because memorizing or only uh, answering multiple choice will not help. And so I strongly suggest you, you check out my website, at least check out how well is your university doing on your CPA exam. This will give you an idea about your performance. Please make sure to connect with me on LinkedIn and on YouTube. Let's go ahead and get started. So in this question, you are being a series, uh, a a series of uh, transactions, and they want you to account for them using the fair value option, the equity method, what's the effect on net income, what's the effect on the balance sheet. So a lot of information, once again, they could be a multiple choice, they could be a simulation. Let's work with them in the form of a simulation. So on January 4th, we have Adam Bakery paid 340 million for 10 million shares of Maggie's common stock. So Adam bought Maggie, 30% of Maggie's. Investment represents 30% in the net asset. And, and gave Adam, Maggie gave Adam the ability to exercise significant influence. This means if they want to use the equity method, they, can, they, they, they have significant influence. Adam chooses the fair value method option for this investment. So notice Adam chooses the fair value option. That's important. Adam received Dividend of $3 per share on December 15, toward the end of the year, Maggie reported net income of $230 million. The market value of Maggie's common stock on December 31st is $32 per share. On the purchase date, the book value of Maggie's identifiable assets were $880 million, and the fair value of Maggie's depreciable asset with an average remaining life of four years exceeded the book value by 120. Yes, usually the depreciable asset, they increase in value. Therefore, we have a book value of 880 plus 120 in additional fair value. So the fair value of Maggie's uh, company is 1 million. The remainder of the excess of the cost of the investment over the book value of the net asset purchase was attributable to goodwill. We don't have to worry about this. So we're going to prepare the journal entries first using the fair value option, show the effect on net income, show the effect on the balance sheet. Then we're going to prepare the entries under the equity method. But again, once we're done with the equity method, we're going to go back and report everything at fair value. So I will show you both the equity and the fair value and what's the effect on net income, what's the effect on the balance sheet. Let's go ahead and get started, starting with the first transaction when we purchase the company. January 4th, we're gonna, here you're gonna be using the fair value method. Here we're using the fair value. Be, uh, Adam purchased uh, the 10 million shares for 340 million. Simply put, you bought an asset. Buying a company, you are buying, making an investment. That's simply an asset. So we debit an asset, investment and equity securities, 340 million, credit cash, 340 million. Simply put, you purchased an asset. So basically, we're done with the first line. We purchased an asset. Done. The investment represents 30%. That's good information, but it's not really relevant for the fair value. That's done. Adam chooses the fair value. We already know this for this example. Adam received dividend of $3 per share on December 31st, on December 15, 2021, and Maggie's reported net income of $230 million. Now, that's good. Maggie reported net income of $230 million. That's not really relevant for us, nor um, it's not really relevant for us. Why not? 
because since we are accounting for the investment at fair value, we don't care what they reported of net income. Therefore, we don't really do anything for net income. Okay. Now, we get paid $3 per share. Well, we have to account for this. We have to account for this. Why? Because we actually receive dividend. Well, if we receive dividend, we're going to have to debit cash because dividend is in cash. We're going to debit cash 26 million and we are going to credit. We are going to credit dividend revenue 26 million. So simply put, I'm sorry, uh, receive dividend rather than $3 two dollars and sixty cents i apologize so uh, receive dividend of two dollars and sixty cent therefore debit cash 26 credit dividend revenue 26. now at the end of the year so basically we're done with the dividend so i just made an error it was two dollars and sixty cent for this example at the end of the year the fair market value of the stock is 32 dollars. now what happened is this if you purchased if you purchase 10 million shares for 340 million, it means the cost per share, the cost is $34. What happened at the end of the year? The cost went down to $32. So therefore, you have a loss of $2. What does that mean? It means you have to record a loss, a fair value adjustment, a fair value adjustment. It's a loss. So when you have a fair value adjustment, what you do is you, you you should have a credit and fair value adjustment so let I mean, i'm going to show you how to use the fair value adjustment but this session is is not about this account if you want to learn about fair value adjustment please go to my website so here what we're doing is we are adjusting the portfolio or the investment to market so simply put the fair value adjustment is zero because this is the first year we purchase this investment therefore the fair value because we have a loss we should have a balance we should have a balance because we have a loss. We should have a balance of 20. Well, guess what? If the balance should be 20, because our losses are 20, because $2 times 10 million equal to 20 million, therefore we have to credit fair value adjustment. Well, when we credit fair value adjustments, what do we debit? We debit a loss. We debit a loss of 20 million. Therefore, we debit a loss on investment and that loss goes into net income and we credit fair value adjustment of 20 million. Now, if you don't know how to adjust your portfolio to market or your security to market, please go to my website. I do extensive explanation and extensive review of this topic, okay? Now, going through all these transactions using the fair value method, the question is, what's the effect on income? Simply put, how much goes on the income statement? Well, the dividend revenue goes on the income statement, 26 million right here, then minus the loss, so we have a plus six million on income. What is the value of your investment? Well, the value of my investment, I purchased it at 340. Then I am gonna have a fair value adjustment credit of 20, which is a contra asset. My fair value adjustment equal to 320. And this is the fair value. Pretty straightforward concept, accounting for these transactions. So basically what we did is we purchased the, purchased the stock, no entry when they reported net income, uh, recorded the revenue, the cash dividend revenue and we adjusted the investment at the end of the year we're going to do the same thing but now we're going to be using the equity method then after we use the equity method we go back and we adjust everything to market let's start with the equity method we purchased 300 and uh, 10 million worth of 340 million debit investment and equity affiliate which is an asset credit cash so rather than call it just investment in equity securities we call it an equity affiliate but it's the same concept it doesn't really matter they're both assets you made an investment now so we're done with this purchase the investment we're done with this now this is important we have significant influence so the company received not company our investee which is Maggie's, reported 230 million. That's good. Now, if Maggie reported 230 million, we are going to get 30% of that. We're going to get 30% of that. Therefore, what we do is we'll take 230 million, 230 million, and multiply it by 30%. And that is our our share of income. So 230 times 0.3, we're going to record 69 as an increase in the investment. So this is important. So I'm going to have this investment account here. Investment in equity affiliate. It's this account here. 
investment and equity affiliate. I started with 340. Now, how do you do investment under the equity method? Under the equity method, you will increase your investment by the proportionate income that the investee report. The investee reported 230. You, 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 not you qualify. You, 669 million is kind of yours from the income. It belongs to you. Therefore, you increase your investment and you credit a revenue account, investment revenue of 69 million. So we're done with the income. Now also, they, again, not two, it's 260. They, they paid you 10 million times $2 and 60 cent. You're gonna debit cash 26 million. Now, under the equity method, what do you credit when you receive dividend? Now think about it. Where is dividend coming from? Where dividend is coming from income. Dividend is coming from income. So you remember this income here, the 230 million, 230 million. When, when the investee, when Maggie pays the dividend, it's gonna come out of this income. You already accounted for all this income that's yours. So simply put, your net income is here. Now the dividend comes out of this income. So when they pay you this income, when they pay you cash, your investment account goes down by 26 million. Therefore you debit cash 26 million, you credit, investment by 20 26 million 26 million and this is for the dividend this is for net income so net income increase your investment dividend reduce your investment now what else are we told in this problem since we're using the equity method we are told when we purchase this company the book value were, were 880 million there was an additional fair value to the uh, to the depreciable asset in total we had the company was worth a million what happened is this so you did buy in a sense you did buy those 100 that extra fair value now what happened is this you cannot count this extra fair value because kind of you you, you over not you overpaid you paid for the fair value but you have to make an adjustment so simply put of this 120 million you got 40% of it. I'm sorry, 30%. So you got 40 million of this. You got 40 million of the 120 million. Simply put, you paid. You did not bought the, you did not buy the whole company. You bought only 40%, which is which is uh, 30%, 30%, not 40, which is 40 million. Now what's going to happen is this that 40 million that you have, you're going to have to reduce your income by because it's gonna, it's basically in a sense, it's an increase in depreciation. You're gonna take this 100, uh, the 40 million, and divide it by four, 120 million times that. Let's do it again. 100 and let me pull the calculator here. This way we don't make any mathematical mistake. We have 120 times 0.3 which should be, oh, it should be, sorry, should be, that's why that's the math, 36 divided by four, nine. Therefore, it's 36, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, this is 36 million. So you purchase this 36 million. 36 million will have uh, divided by four equal to nine. So what, what happened is this, you're gonna have to reduce your income by nine nine million because this is extra depreciation therefore you debit investment revenue credit investment and affiliates what you do is you reduce your investment account by an additional nine million and this is for the depreciation adjustment again if you have any questions about how we did this this is a whole topic by itself this is a whole topic by itself go to fourhatlectures.com but this is what we do since there was extra fair value that we purchased. We reduced revenue by, the, by that extra fair value of depreciation. Now, at the end of the year, we are told the stock price. Now, let, let's first find the investment account. Well, if we take, let's do it on a calculator. This way we don't make any math errors. So we take 340 million we started with plus 69 in revenue minus 26 in dividend minus nine as depreciation adjustment. So right now the balance is 374. Well, is this the true balance and in investment? No, they tell us at the end of the day, we chose to use the fair value. Although we account for it using the equity method, at the end of the year, we adjust. Well, how much do we have to adjust the investment to? We have to adjust the investment to fair value. What is the fair value adjustment? 
320 million, which is 10 million shares times 32. What does that mean? It means I have to reduce my investment by an additional 54 million. So I have to make an adjustment, reduce my investment by 54 million. Therefore, I debit a loss, 54 million. I'm reducing my investment and it goes into net income because I choose to report this investment at fair value and I credit my fair value, which is right here at 54 million. Now my balance is correct, 320 million. So let's look at the effect of net income overall for this method. We're starting with investment of uh, investment revenue of 69 investment revenue of nine so what else so we have investment revenue this goes on net income this is no net income we oh no debit and uh, sorry credit revenue which is 69 minus 9 equal to 60 minus 54 which is a loss it goes on the income statement so the net effect is 6 million that's net in effect. And what's the investment balance? The investment balance is 320 million. And hopefully you knew they should be the same as the prior method because in the prior method, in the prior method, we use the fair value method, 6 million and 320 million. So they both, they should equal to each other because after we, after we accounted for it during the year using the equity method, at the end of the year, we adjust it to fair value and we are allowed to do so. Once again, I'm going to invite you to check out my website, farhatlectures.com. Here's, he, here's my proposal to you. You might be studying for the CPA exam, okay? My subscription per month is $29. You can cancel. So all what you risk is $29, $29.99 to be more specific, to maybe have a chance of increasing your score by 10 to 15 points. So $30 to check out your, see if it works for you. It worked for many other students. Check out my LinkedIn recommendation or check out the recommendation the student reviews on my website. That's my offer to you. Are you willing to risk that to see if you could improve your score substantially? That's your call. Don't shortchange yourself. The CPA is a lifetime investment. Study hard. Good luck. And most importantly, stay safe.